Duty is sacrifice. It eclipses all things, even blood. What's going on, everybody? You're listening to the For Your Consideration podcast, and we are back. With Holy another... shit, we're back! Like I, know, I know, I know, I know. It's surprising. It's a miracle. What? You what know, world is this? <laughs> you know, uh, you know what they say. What, what about they streaks? I guess I'm, I'm. Two is a two makes a habit. But ain't it three a trend? You yeah, clearly don't know what I don't. I was, just, <laughs> I was hoping Danny would be the one like to jump in. and. I had, I had no idea yeah, what you were so. saying. <laughs> you know what they say. Well, clearly we don't. <laughs> but no, we are back with a, another episode of reviewing House of the Dragon, episode two, Rhaenyra the Cruel. And of course, to help me Break it all down. I'm joined alongside by my trusted friends and colleagues. To my left, in person, it's a party. Not really. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Uh, <laughs> Literally, like, <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. That's the kind of night we're gonna have. Yeah. Right? Oh my yeah. gosh. Well, uh, well, I'm here in the flesh. It's a party, apparently. but I can't. But I'm virtual to the people out there. So I, we, we got. So that am I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got that's what I'm saying. We got that in common. We're, don't try to don't try to relate to me now. Yeah, we got Tyron. <laughs> don't forget that D. Yeah. Walkie. <laughs> <laughs> why? Just why? Okay. Uh, I can't cut it out now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, we have Tamiks. I have a two-year-old. Uh, <laughs> Newman also here to uh, help. Wait us till you have him. a two-year-old. Just wait. Oh uh, yeah, I mean things change. Not now, not when you have a kid, but when you have a two-year-old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, specifically. Yeah, specifically. No, specifically, two -year -old. No, specifically. Yeah, definitely. I mean that's when they hit the terrible too. Yeah, so. yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. But um, yeah, like I said, we're here to break down another episode of House of the Dragon, episode two. Um, Rhaenyra, the cruel. I have my notes here. I started writing them before I knew that you were going to be here. <laughs> so the first slide I have, Tamika's not here. She wanted to to teach and make money instead of being on the podcast. I'm over here making money. I know. Like, who does that? Who does that? I mean, you get your priorities in order. Damn. I have a two year old. <laughs> so I need money. <laughs> um, yeah, the other thing I also realized is. As I do research, because, you know, if you host a podcast, ideally, you know, you should, you know, know stuff about the topics that you're, yeah, <laughs> you're going to be talking about. Yeah, but as yeah. you do more research, the unfortunate reality is that I know more information <laughs> about, like, what ends up happening. Like, I, I mistakenly stumble upon... Mm. Spoilers. So you had some book spoilers. Yeah, man. Okay. That's the only. Okay. <laughs> it's just like I don't. I'm not intentionally like looking for it. I'm in, like trying to find more information yeah. to help, you know, give the people a better rounded, you know, episode. And then you know, you stumble upon some information that it's like, oh damn, shit. Now I know. So now, like now that you're watching the episodes going forward, that's like in the back of your mind that that particular thing happens so well now sense. you're gonna say something that we're gonna be like why'd you say that and then we're gonna be like oh shit that's what yeah no i'm not gonna do that I'm, okay I'm, well thank you yeah i don't want to spoil it i've yeah. been intentionally trying to avoid yeah the thing is i before before they even had announced this um show i had i um had listened to stories about um the uh Dance of the not dance fire and blood. blood. Yeah, fire and blood. I listened to the audio section of this, of this. You know what the what the um, what the uh, series is covering. Yeah. Um, and I completely forget. So I mean that that was a, but now it's starting to come back to me. <laughs> Sadly. Got you. Um, but we are going to start off at the tippy top of this episode, and we get the maids, um, right after the death of Jaharis, we get the maids. Um, carrying or the maid, not the maids, the maid carrying the blood soaked uh, blanket. Um, there's just uh, the staff is awakened out of bed. They're ushered into the to the courtyard. The dogs are barking, uh, sniffing the, the blanket. Yeah. Um, 
there's just a whole bunch of of chaos. We we got um, a guy that uh, spilled some ashes <laughs> walking that you know that they were ushering in, into the courtyard. Um, it's just complete chaos and madness. After that, we get we get a shot of Aegon um, destroying a. I guess uh, the I, series kind of like mock up of Valeria. Yeah, Valeria. Um, we you get like a architectural. Yeah, I don't know. What the, I, I was gonna say. Call. I was gonna say it was like a clay, but it's not really it's a not clay. clay. Thing, I, but I would just call it a three D map. Yeah, three D model. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty advanced for, even for this time. Like, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but uh, for storytelling purposes, well, it's, very symbolic. Yeah, too, yeah, of yeah, what but, yeah. Later. Very yeah, it's symbolic. crazy because a lot of the the first season we get a lot of Viserys, um working on that on that model, like yes. a lot of scenes with him and and Allison, you know, working together on that on that uh, yep. old um, Valeria model, and now Aegon sort of destroys it, which sort of what a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we get Aegon destroyed. I just I didn't appreciate. Cause we did see a lot of that last season. Yeah, we he did. just like, eh, I'm just gonna. I mean, I get it. He, he, they did. I was gonna say it's not like he just did it because <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm oh yeah, 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 like his son did that. Yeah, like, I can't yeah. forget that. But, you know, <laughs> sounds like a good, pretty good reason, like to 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 go berserk on a on a model. I'm saying know? so insensitive. <laughs> yeah, it's because he doesn't have a two year old. Well, he just comes off like a. He really does come off as a petulant. He does, and that's where we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get more into it because he because as the episode goes on. But go ahead. Yeah, but what's interesting too is that he does he tries to act like he's not and then right. you have there's moments where it definitely comes out it's like you're you're actually just a kid yeah I but think, then, for sure. yeah yeah no i think uh the death of his son um also uh some of the verbiage that was directed towards him uh used by auto basically saying that he's weak <laughs> yeah and i think he sort of internalizes that and is just like I, you know he says even several times throughout the episode that you know i don't want to be perceived as be, as being weak um which leads to him which leads him to like essentially murder innocent rat catchers um you know well they did it, catch the right one they though. did catch the right one i guess i guess it was all worth it i i guess to murder innocent people um we'll we'll get to that yes um so we also get in the in the opening uh sequence which is mostly just visual storytelling while the while uh the score is being played we also get a scene of of Eamon who sort of finds the the passageway leading into his room yes um in that scene as it turns out as we find later on in the episode uh Eamon was actually at a brothel um so he wasn't there to be murked. <laughs> so he, he avoided travesty. But I, I you know, I but mean, everybody, this kid really died because everybody wanted to get laid. Th that's basically <laughs> it, which is kind of crazy when you really think about it. Like, that's true. Allison was getting her cheeks clapped. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Like, how else can we, like, we, just... we got to be real. Like, what's but, going on, man? Like, <laughs> I mean, technically, when they caught her, she wasn't getting anything slapped. She was, you know, doing her part. Man, that pancake ass. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation just took a serious Sorry, he started, I'm really he uncomfortable. Took, he took it there. He took it there. <laughs> Listen. With his ass clapped. <laughs> but everyone. Okay, he I said cheeks. Y'all, you're just making it worse. <laughs> Sorry. But everyone basically, but what Danny said was right. Everyone in this episode is getting sexed. getting it in. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, well, the whole reason why this kid is dead because is because everyone was off getting pleasure sexually. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> they're off getting getting yeah, laid. These yeah. kids are getting worse off for it. Because... Yeah, basically, that's essentially what happened. When you really yeah, when you think about yeah, it, like everyone was... that was involved in this that had a direct hand in it for was. Sure. You know, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, or well, Eamon didn't have a direct hand in it, but it's kind, it's kind of like you know what, Eamon, if you were actually yeah, there, you got murked. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you, well, I'll find out. But yeah, but I'm I saying, was gonna say probably, he probably still wouldn't have. Gotten, he probably nah, would have fought them off. Yeah, he would have. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. But I, you know, the idea is being. But they would have like, never got to. Uh, yeah, they would have never murdered Jaharis if they found Eamon. Sure. Yeah, so I mean, you know what? You know, it's your fault, Eamon, probably, because if you hadn't been off, you know. And they had <laughs> to take 
his path to get yeah to yeah to so. get to the room so anyway. i'm sure he probably i'm sure you know the scene in a brothel with him sort of talking to his you know the mother like figure there yes um sort of you know him talking about feeling a little guilty about what you know what happened um i think he feels a little like guilty as as well of that you know a kid was murdered while he was off you know you know there so <clears throat> Um, but after we sort of get, oh, also another thing that I do want to bring up is for all of those nerds out there are sweaties, uh, you know, the, the, the mega, mega or the cruel had built those, um, those secret passages when he was, um, king. And then he had everyone that had a hand in building those, uh, tunnels, uh, murked. So, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, he killed he killed off everybody, but why? apparently not everybody because everyone because people still know about him. Yeah, so, you know, rats so. still know. Wait, why yeah. he killed off everybody? That because he didn't want anybody. Yeah, to he didn't want that. anybody to know, mm -hmm. and uh, he didn't do. Apparently, he didn't do a good enough job because apparently there's there's you know a lot of people that know about the tunnels, and also there's there's a lot of tunnels that apparently are that are that are still hidden that no one sort of knows about, but. Yeah, I mean, there's enough people that know about them. I mean, um, Varys used them often, and yeah. the spies, you know, in the castle used them often as well, if, you know, if referencing um, the original Game of Thrones series. But we then transition to a conversation between Otto and, and Alicent, and where she almost, in my opinion, because in, in, this, in this conversation, she alludes to the gods are, punning, are punishing us and punishing me for our sins. And then Aldo is like, what sins? And then the conversation sort of goes on from there. But I do think this is a, another scene where Allison is feeling guilty, obviously, about mm -hmm. her uh, relations with um, with uh, Kristen. Yeah. And I, a part of me almost thought that she might, might reveal to her father that this thing was going on. I don't know if, if you felt the same, but... Oh yeah, she was definitely. I mean, she wants to let it out. She yes, wants to absolutely. Up. Yeah, it's you know. I mean, we've seen two episodes in a row now. She's they shoot her in a bathtub and she's like scrubbing herself. She's cleansing herself because she wants to cleanse that sin that she feels. But that's never gonna rub off. It's but it's not even. Off. But less than the sin, it's just the guilt of knowing that because she is doing it. Because I don't even think there's so much guilt for the actual action. The actual mm, yeah. action. I mean, we see that then. Yeah. Right. So I, I think it's more so now. Now she's just like, oh, this is act. This actually has consequences. Mm. So I think it's more. But I definitely agree that I was just waiting for her to burst, and then we see that again later on. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm speaking prematurely. But I really think I, I don't think I, he's not stupid. The hand knows everything. Oh yeah, he but, definitely knows. So he knows. Yeah, we'll so get into I'm that, like, but. Yeah, he definitely knows. I would agree with that. We'll get there. Yeah. So, so then after their conversation, um, we then jump into the council meeting um, where Aegon is still, you know, having his his hissy fit. Um, Laris, the... Uh, we finally found out his name. <laughs> That's right. We don't have to call him feet fetish. I know. I know. I mean, I, I forgot <laughs> his name the last episode. I'm trying to amend for certain things that I forgot the pa the previous episode. Yeah, because we got to be ripped for that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Laris, I, I will still call him the feet fetish guy. Yeah, because it's funny. Yeah, yeah, it is sure. funny. And also it helps people remember who exactly this guy is. This, you know, true. He, um, um, he comes in and is like, we found we found the guy or found one of the guys. We found blood. Um, and, Ag and Aegon's like, you know, he's ready for war. You know, he's ready to to have blood. And then Otto is just like, hold on, there, young whippersnapper. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's actually use this moment. Um, get some information. Just get some information, but let's also spin it. I mean, he he would make an excellent PR guy. Like, yeah, the the way like that's essentially what he does. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. The way he sort of dis disassociates himself from the actual feeling of being a essentially a grandfather, a grandfather that lost, right. you know, a grandson to being 
Well, there's nothing that we can really do. I mean, do you think he feels anything anyway? Honestly, I like, think he, he does feel something, but I also think he's, he's so focused. Yeah, I think, and I think we'll talk about that later on between um, Eric and Eric. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> you know their their dilemma that they find them that they found themselves in. Mm -hmm. But I think Otto's so like one sided, so extremely focused on this one thing that he's able to sort of put aside the emotional aspect of it. Um, but he's always been good at that. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at his relationship <laughs> with Allison. Like the only reason she was able to get where she was is because he basic basically manipulated the situation yeah yeah of course to be what it was so he's mm. always been very good at compartmentalizing mm. and focusing on having control that's really all he wants is he wants to be in a position of control mm -hmm. yeah and that 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 stands over everything so he may have i don't know he may have some feelings like oh yes that's my grandson oh that's really sad he it, it gives me um he gives me oh don't be mad at me um, what was the name of the father in Game of Thrones of the Lannisters? The Lannisters' father, Tyr um, Tyron? Um, Tyrion? No, Ty Ty Tywin. 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 Yeah. He gives me Tywin vibes. Not as cool, <laughs> but very like business minded. Like I, I mean, yeah, he, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, I can see. That. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I would agree. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there are some. Not with just him as a character, but I do think there are some. Um, some character comparisons between the Game of Thrones characters and House of the Dragon characters, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. as as we talked about last episode, we compared um, Aegon to Joffrey, and there's some similarities. Some similarities there. Um, I think there's even similarities between the Starks and the the this version of the Targaryens in terms of Rhaenyra. Like she sort of has, you know, that sort of. Even, you know, even though she had her, her even her excursions, you know, with having um, with her uncle, with her uncle <laughs> and then, you know, having um, children, you know, with, uh, yeah, heroin. Yeah. So I, I think in terms of a sense of like duty and pride and doing the right thing and being righteous, I think she carries a lot of that as well, which is similar to the Starks, even though like as we see in Game of Thrones, this series, they are nothing like each other the targaryens and the stars once we get to game of thrones but i think here there are similarities even you know with those with those two families that are going on here yeah but um but going back to Otto, um he devises this plan um because right now at this at this present moment the public sort of sees aegon as being weak as mm -hmm. as not being a very strong leader and they are and Otto sort of alludes to it that they are sort of siding with Rhaenyra as being the rightful heir to to the to the throne so he sort of paints this picture of well why don't we sort of spin it that like you know Rhaenyra was behind this attack and um she's a a, a murderer who you know who kills who kills babies and <laughs> And so that's the PR spin that they're that they're going with. They're going to try and you know get support from the public. They're going to have this funeral pr procession. Yeah, Trump needs this guy, man. <laughs> You're because <yeah. laughs> that's he, some good spin. He, he did. He did a he did a good job. I mean, as we know later on in the episode, it kind of sort of all goes goes to hell. Like his his uh, yeah. his efforts sort of all go to hell. But at least at the beginning of the episode, we do we do sort of see the public sort of sort of change where um Alicent and Helena Helena thank oh you I don't gosh. know why I keep forgetting her name <laughs> maybe <laughs> so I need to write down all the people all the characters I, I, does have it written I do that's the thing but it's like it's hard like to get, <laughs> keep juggling back and forth yeah but yeah Helena so they're all you know and they're in they're in a carriage you know um it's a very public showing. Of course, Aegon's not there because he's a loose cannon. Who knows what he's going to do? Oh my God. But yeah, I mean, I guess Tamika or Danny, you can jump in. Like, what did you actually think about his plan as far as like turning the public against Renera? I mean, I obviously don't want to be on Otto's side here because I don't really like the greens that much. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, the show is pivoting us to, to root for more for the blacks anyway. Um, it's a good plan, man. I mean, you what? It's politically Game of Thrones wise, the game, you know, 
It's a great freaking plan. And what makes me mad is Damon just set them up for that. Like it was a it, yeah, absolutely. Because they couldn't have done anything. <laughs> Damon yeah, absolutely. Just You're absolutely still. right. <laughs> You're absolutely right. He so really, <laughs> and what right. what made me so upset is like I was just like. It was a great plan. I agree. But I'm like, dang, she getting all the flack. And she had nothing to do with it. She had nothing to do with nothing. Because freaking Damon's stupid behind. Wanted yeah. to pull strings. I mean, yeah. It's very true. Uh, I did also want to say earlier in this scene, we got um, Aegon questioning Sir Kristen about like where he was. And, mm-hmm. and we just get a shot of sort of Allison's face like when he's questioning him. Like, <laughs> yeah, like... Oh, oh, man. Man. Yeah, exactly. further or what yeah so i just thought that it was <laughs> please like, don't <laughs> that was some really good visual storytelling yeah, absolutely they're just like focusing on a phrase there's some really good story te- uh, visual storytelling throughout this entire yeah. episode yes yeah. and uh the next scene also sort of um shows that too because we didn't jump to me this was my favorite or one of the two of my favorite scenes or maybe three of my favorite scenes and in this in this episode when we jump to dragonstone and we have renera um and her council meeting and we see that she's getting she got word that you know Shaharis has has died there's some questioning going on like mm. there's no way that from her side that she would murder a child like what you know what would it benefit her like why you know why would she you know go out of her way to 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 murder a, an innocent child and i think a part of her council sort of questions like, I don't know. You, you just lost your Yeah, exactly. Family. So you're 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 a mother that's grieving. Um, you know, you're unpredictable. Um, but this is the same council that literally heard her say, I want Eamon. Yeah. So clearly, like I just made that distinction. Like clearly, like, why yeah, she wouldn't because he clearly told you what she wanted. Yeah. Fucking Damon. <laughs> and during this whole <laughs> sequence, the camera cuts back and forth between Rainey's and and Damon and, yeah. and I think because Renee's she knew she yeah yeah, like, yeah absolutely and the thing is they both knew because then you, by the end of the scene you start to see Renera sort of pick up on it too right the wheels are turning. yeah the wheels are I, turning that was it, my favorite part when yeah. she looked at him and she was smiling and this is one of those things where she's like <sighs> and then she's thinking you could literally see it in her yeah. face she's just like what what the hell did you do like it was so funny I was literally cracking up. Yeah, it's very, very good visual storytelling. And you as an audience sort of know that like, and I love the fact that they made them like smart women in that instance. Like they were able to figure it out without any words yeah. being said, but you can you can see them thinking and then processing yeah. it with them not even saying a single word, but you can yeah. see like them in their minds playing out it was Damon's dumb ass that, 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 <laughs> that, that did this shit. You know what I'm saying? That was literally her expression. Yeah. Like, dumb ass. Yeah, exactly. What did you so, do? That was literally like a mother looking at a child. Like, what did you do? Yeah. Like, what yeah. did you actually do? Yeah. yeah. So I, I thought that was a well executed scene. Yeah. Um, back to like visual storytelling. And yeah. That was executed brilliantly for sure. Mm-hmm. And, and then we jump to my, probably my favorite scene of the episode which is a conversation between damon and renera where i felt like she pretty much said everything that we as an audience Have already seen, yeah. yeah already yeah. knew about damon that he's yeah unpredictable unreliable you can't trust him renera mentions the fact that she loved the challenge of trying to essentially uh, conquer him yeah. or tame him Figure when she was younger history, yeah yeah and now that she's older it's like no longer a game like, like i know who you are like you're we, i mean we've been trying to tell her we've been trying to tell her you have this chip on your shoulder <laughs> you know viserys is king you know you were supposed to but you're not i am bitch what's up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah she, i and, mean she read him for filth like, absolutely yeah, and i thought it was filth. i thought it was executed so well the acting was the so dialogue, well the yeah, dialogue the was so here. good yeah. the blocking was really well done yeah. them pacing around the room yeah, was, that was extremely really well done it was um, making me i feel like in the moment i was getting frustrated exactly with her. Like, yeah. <laughs> exactly Dar- Dar- um emma darcy did an well both emma darcy and and, and matt smith did an excellent job in that in that scene because i felt like you to make it like i was getting frustrated for renera like i felt her frustration in in that scene and i guess my question also too is 
do you think that if if Damon w- was more self controlled, do you think that Viserys would have made him heir if he was more like? Just um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, I think yeah. a lot of things. Yeah, I think I think everything that Venera read him for <laughs> were the reasons why. His, yeah, Viserys. Yeah, he didn't pick him. To, I think addressing all of those issues, it just shows the lack of growth in this character because he really hasn't changed any he's just gotten older and his brother knew it his brother knew it from the time that they were he was younger he's just like nah you're not fit you about to you about to tear this whole kingdom down i can't have you up here <laughs> yeah so um it, it also makes me think that so because of that because of your answers it makes me think that Renero kind of is is like default like he has no other option mm. but to make Rhaenyra his his heir not I because I don't I mean in the show they you know they they sort of make it clear that you know he is truly behind this decision but I also wonder if Damon had an eighth of his self put together if <laughs> he you know would have made Damon heir I, it was just a question that I I have you know was wondering about I mean yeah she did kind of make it by default didn't she <laughs> I don't, don't want to put her in that position man. she she's great yeah, I don't. <laughs> I guess you don't agree. I don't know. I, I, I don't have an answer to the question. I, don't, yeah. I really don't know. Um, I feel like I think I feel like there's a chance if he had it, like you said, if there was an eighth of him that was put together and at least at least the king could have seen some kind of growth in him, mm-hmm. some kind of level of maturity. Mm-hmm. I think he could have been like, hey, like. But. It didn't happen. So. Yeah. So it was just a hypothetical question. He's very. Um, I would say he's very. He's he's like a petulant child, just like yeah. Aegon. I mean, are oh, they yeah. really all that much different? No, except that he's older. Not, yeah. yeah. I mean, he. Yeah. Um, the other question I have here is, you know, by the end of their, well, two questions here. Do you do you think that Damon is truly remorseful that he essentially got a child to kill? Because he does say it, and he does. He, <laughs> he, well, he ends up saying, "Oh, it was a mistake." Yeah, it was, it was a, mistake. a mistake. But he doesn't own up to which mistake that gave yeah. probably multiple mistakes. Yeah, that made. yeah. He can go. He can talk. He's such a narcissist that he can literally talk cir- circles and justifying. He's like, "Oh, that kind of sucks." It's like it's like somebody apologizing and being like, "Well, I'm sorry you feel that way." It's like you're not actually taking accountability for what you for the part that you played you're just saying like well it sucks that you feel that way it sucks that you're sad but this is this you know it is what it is i think it's i think also too it sucks that he got caught <laughs> like i think i think that's yeah. part of it too like yeah. you know he's he's yeah he didn't think he was gonna yeah that, he, he didn't think this was gonna well well he didn't think it was gonna end up the way it yeah, I, yeah. I, so exactly. he was trying to fly yeah, under yeah, the radar yeah, yeah. like oh and then, you know, Skin he was, not. like, trying to, you know, kiss up to uh, Rhaenyra, like, oh, I put the crown on your head, man. What you talking about, man? <laughs> <laughs> That's how he like, goes Like, ain't nobody, ain't head. nobody, ain't nobody, <laughs> no, ain't nobody falling for that anymore, Damon. Nah, for real, because, like, oh, yeah, she read you already. Man. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can't, you can't tell her nothing no more. So, I, when the scene happened, I was like, finally, man. Just... Finally, right? Like, but th- <laughs> the question is, I and, I and I expect this, that they will have some sort of form of reconciliation before the end of oh, this yeah, for sure. season and he will find himself back on her side that's in some sort I of capacity i i don't know i i can't speak to that i think it definitely changes her perception of him i think it's just, i think she's in the same position as her father in terms of there's no maturity growth i think there is room for reconciliation if she can see maturity and growth Mm -hmm. but if without any change i'm not saying i don't think she's gonna kick him out Mm -hmm. i think she loves him yeah but and i think she has a passion for him but he's also just in the way at this point (laughs) of what needs to get done and what she's trying to achieve but a part of me also thinks that she does need him just from uh from a we're going to war type standpoint (laughs) like and he's he's arguably one of the better 
fighters that she has on oh, yeah. on her side. Yeah. Yes, but um, she has that may be true. And he also has, has dragon too. So <laughs> that also. But, but yes, this is all true. I, I think they need each other. I really yeah. do think it balances out. If Damon could put his pride aside. The problem is he thinks he can keep um pulling strings and it's not helping. Mm. It's not, it's like, mm. it's, it's like, you're not the, you're not the king. Like mm. you keep trying to make moves. Like you're a king. You're not, you are, you, you are an assistant to the queen <laughs> who is actually pulling the strings yeah. and you're just kind of getting in the way. Um, and, and to me, like kind of to, I was just thinking of this, like his whole, his whole attempt to capture whatever the guy, what's his name? Um, the one that killed Venera's son. By the, what's the name? The one that was they were trying to kill. Oh, Amon. Oh, Amon. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> so him going. First of all, they even called it out when they said he was just like, "You gonna send me in there by myself? He's gonna destroy me." Like. Mm -hmm. he's a fighter like what am I gonna do um so it was a stupid plan it was a dumb plan well, that's not the, the only place. dumb plan that we're gonna talk about today yeah, it, yeah. But the, and I think and, and I, and I don't want to speak prematurely but I was mm -hmm. just gonna say I draw comparison to the other dumb plan of trying to infiltrate now their castle yeah it's a dumb plan plan both and, and you're and there's supposed to be these men who are supposed to be rational and think clearly but you're making really stupid decisions yeah. whereas venera he was calling venera weak because it's like she was grieving but she she was strong for being in her grief and going through her process so that she didn't make any moves unlike Aegon, who's just like oh well my son's killed if you just look at the stark differences between the two Aegon is tripping Wanting to destroy everybody, killing innocent people. Whereas Venera was like, I need to be in my hole. I need to grieve so I can come out mm -hmm. and I can run this kingdom the way it needs to be run. No, I, I do think it's interesting that most during the first two episodes that uh, the women mostly have been the more rational ones and the men right. have been more irrational just sort of reacting off of yes but, but i also want to say Allison and you don't think that way at all yeah would, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well when it comes when it comes to her 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 right. own impulsive uh desires <laughs> she's very like um forward in terms of of going after them but i also think that she is reserved in terms of i think i still think that she has a, a lot of love for Renera and she doesn't she doesn't she even said in the first episode that yeah. like she understand that 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 she understands that war is necessary and it's inevitable but right. she's like wants to avoid it at all costs you know yeah um but I also look at Renera and think back to episode one and thinking well she also is culpable in this thing as well, because she said, I want Eamon. <laughs> and that sort of set the series of That's actions in, mo in motion that sort of Damon sort of took and he sort of ran with it, you know? So she is not entirely blameless. Yeah, but I don't think she was like, all right, I want you to infiltrate. And no, I no, she didn't say that, matches. but she- See, I think she was really ready just to go, go to war. Yeah. And be like, yo, if you kill him in the process, great. Yeah, so but I, I see your point though. It's like she she didn't give any direction. No, no, she didn't in that moment. Yeah, she said I want so it's I want Eamon and then walked off like a G. Yeah, right. I give her for, I give her if, just in terms of a gangster moment, like she <laughs> she killed it. But term, but but it's but, like okay, any yeah, which way? Yeah, and the thing is that she knew I'm and you know now I'm talking this out. I guess I got to put more blame on her. Is that she knew who she was talking to in that room? That's true. <laughs> like she knew that that's Damon true. was a loose cannon, and she sort of let him loose. Like to, I mean, she that's true. I get what you're saying. I mean, she was still a mother in grieving. Once she found the body, well, the dragon's body. You know, I think that sent her just like, okay, it's for sure that my son is dead. You know, let like I want him. Yeah. But I also just, you know, I, as a as a as a mother, 
you just are expressing yourself also you just need to you just need to grieve you just need to go through your process and she said what she said but i'm like just damon didn't have to go off and i mean i think I, I think she fully meant what she said i don't think... i know no i'm not saying she oh, didn't okay. mean it but for him again i think it comes down to he didn't he didn't confer with her. He was just like, right. She probably dude. wanted to, you know, talk it out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least make her privy to the plan that you're right, going right, on. Right, but right, it, but if she, but, but if he style. had, she would have said no. Yeah, I, yeah. It is interesting how they, how these two plans sort of mirror each other. And we'll, and we'll talk yeah. more about it, you know, um, uh, a little bit later, but first we do have to get to Sir Kristen Cole, who is, <laughs> and I, he is. He moves I, like such a bitch. <laughs> I can't take it. Say the it. thing is, I can't. Yeah, thank even, you. I thank you for saying. Well, yeah, it you for know, Tamika isn't going to say it. it. You know, <laughs> what, what would you say, Tamika? He moves like a what? He moves like a little girl. <laughs> 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 Okay, <laughs> but you no, get, this, you know, you get my drift. Yeah, this guy's a joke, man. Like a complete, he's <laughs> complete a joke. joke. And the thing is, the actor that plays him is just like he. And I feel bad for him because he had to like turn off his comments and everything. Yeah, people were like yeah. going at him. Like, he, well, this he, sucks for people. Yeah, happen. I know. You know what? It's they're the same, not. They're actually attacking the actor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's the same. It's the same thing. Like with Anthony Starr and uh, that plays Homelander and yeah. the boys. Like people can't disassociate him the actor from the character that he plays like, really yeah no he's he talked about it like how oh, he gets kind of upset that I people don't... people think that he's that character in real life yeah so oh, <laughs> you know but okay <laughs> the hell anyway so, so we get to sir Kristen cole who, who's probably going to be the main sort of almost focus the rest of this episode Honestly, here yeah. uh you know he's fe feeling like tremendous guilt during this episode and i guess that's sort of like a common theme throughout mm -hmm. this episode especially between the two characters of sir Kristen cole and um allison is just this tremendous feeling of guilt and not sort of being able to express that or not being able to sort of tell anybody about it mm -hmm. um you know he he goes to the 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 twin. I don't know. I don't know what. The, no, no, no. I mean, the cafeteria. Like, yeah, like the cafeteria. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> where, the where, yeah, yeah. Uh, where the king's guards gather and hang out and play pool and drink. I guess <laughs> not I play pool. <laughs> <laughs> but he goes there and he sees Sir Eric. I'm going to try my best to differentiate between the two. This is and Eric I, with an A. Yeah. So I, I, I do apologize to the listening audience if I'm not pr pronunciating correctly, but I, I'm trying my best to differentiate between the two because yeah. they're twins and they're supposed to be a, a joke. <laughs> but when it, only when it comes down to like actually doing a podcast and trying to differentiate. I mean, <laughs> it's, not joke, it's not a joke anymore. People, you know, yeah. people care about it. So <laughs> if you remember Sir Eric, um, he... During during the funeral procession scene, when the um, the carriage gets you know stuck in the mud, uh, his cape while he was we trying to talk, we didn't even talk about like the the kid in the. I was I was actually gonna, I was going to talk about it later. Oh, sorry. Okay. It was, okay. it's in my list of other. Okay, of gotcha, other gotcha. Okay. But um, um, his cape actually gets um, uh, gets mud on it when he's trying to get the carriage out of of the mud. And, you know, as a as a member of the Kingsguard, you know, uh, the the cape is a symbol of of innocence yeah. and purity and purity. Yeah, and, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and so and if you remember, there's even, you know, in, in the first episode, uh, what does Sir Kristen do after um, he gets done doing the deed with with Allison? He asked for his for his. Cape. For his yeah, for his cape. So he is he is feeling like this tremendous amount of guilt, and he goes up to Sir Eric, who sees this mud stain, and he's just like, you know what? I'm gonna piss this guy off. I'm gonna I'm gonna f I'm gonna f up his entire day and and his entire life basically essentially. by by essentially because I and I'm speaking as Sir Kristen Cole because I. I'm so emotionally hurt because I'm so emotionally guilty and I cannot articulate these words to anybody. I'm going to take it out on this poor soul and send him on a fool's errand to get himself killed <laughs> by trying to sneak into 
uh, yeah. Dragonstone as his twin brother to go and try and kill Rhaenyra. Stupid. Danny. <laughs> And I, my question is what is the question yeah because there wasn't a I know so my question is like I think we can say that between the blacks and the greens even though the blacks are more seen as the villainous characters you can see their side of the story like yeah, even sure. though you don't necessarily like Otto you can see Otto's perspective Sir Kristen Cole he you can't see anything like you like he's a bad dude like he he's like well, he's There's, worse than that because he pretends to be so righteous. Yeah, there's something yeah. that he's not. So is he, like, in the show to me that doesn't have, like, a clear-cut villain, yeah. is he the true villain of this actual story that that we're in right he's, now? He's bridging on Joffrey levels. Like, <laughs> honestly, like, he is a character that I cannot wait to see die. I don't want him just to die, though. <laughs> I want him to be called out. Well, yeah, that has to happen first. Yes. Like, I need all of it to come to the surface. And then... And then he can go. Yes, and I want Allison to do it. No, I don't, you know, you know I don't um, know, but... <laughs> he might want but, some head um, first before. <laughs> <laughs> but it just, it does make me mad because it's just like, he's he's a silent killer. Mm. Um, He's that he's he's the the person that falls in the background that's also trying to pull strings. Like obviously Damon is a pretty obvious person to blame, right? For instance, like, okay, we know you did something foolish, yeah. but this thing with Prince Eric Prince Eric. <laughs> the, what do you think the, about is it Cinderella? That's Prince Eric. Yeah. <laughs> no, that would be Little Mermaid. Oh yeah, it's Little Mermaid. I'm sorry. Whatever. <laughs> Disney anyway, princesses. But, Mr. Eric. <laughs> but sending this guy. Um, nobody would think, aside from him telling Aegon that it was his idea, which I don't know why. I guess we can talk about that. That whole thing confused me, honestly. Yeah. But I don't think anybody would look to him to be like, oh, you're the cause of this. Like, it's he's very much to me a silent, um, a silent uh, killer. And as you mentioned, he tries to pretend like he's all right, self-righteous. And yeah, I mean, is it even luck that it was Eric to begin with? How about if that was another Kingsguard? Your, what, yeah. was, what would be your plan then? The plan wouldn't work then. Not yeah, really. that's very true. <laughs> like, I, mean, I guess you probably would have still sent him. And yeah, like, like, but still, know. it's just like it's just like he sees the cape. He sees that should be his fucking cape. Yeah. Um. So I don't know, man. Because I think he, yeah. I think he's like that should be him. Like yeah, that should yeah, be yeah. Yeah. you know that's 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 how he sort of is, is is looking at it. But yeah, I mean, as as Tamika alluded to, and as you know, you both alluded to, it, you, like. He is one of those characters where you definitely say that his going away uh, <laughs> permanently from the from the show. Well, how do you want to be so nice? I don't know. I, I know, especially he's after I He's not a I, nice he, person. He's I'm not, not going to be yeah. nice about it. Hey, right. I want him to die. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, you want him to stick around. Because he's entertaining. Yeah, because he's entertaining. It's kind of like with, with Joffrey. Yeah, like, you absolutely true. hated Joffrey. Yeah. But then when he was gone, you missed no, his character. no, you missed. No, his, you didn't no, miss his character at all. No, I don't. I, I was so happy either. when he died. I was I, so sad. He died him. at the right time. You, you he thought did. he died at the right I thought time? he died okay. at the right time. He I gave agree. us five seasons of bullshit. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I was so satisfied when he yeah, died. Was, I'm like, good. Satisfied. We don't. We're done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Move on. Okay. I, I mean, differencing of, of opinion. I because I do think they tried to recreate that character in Ramsey Bolton to a certain extent. And I think they sort of almost took him a little bit too far. Yeah, they did. <laughs> with some of the stuff that he did. Yeah. I don't remember who that is. Okay, well, that's how you yeah. feel about Ramsey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But yeah, but Kristen Cole is definitely one of those characters. I'm just like, he, he is like the main villain of the char- the the series just because like, I don't hate anybody more exactly. than I hate him. Because I, I don't so really like looking at him. That's true. Because, <laughs> like, you know, the thing is that they kind of rolled you into this too because... When you first introduced, yeah, you think to, he's not—he's not a bad. You know, guy. yeah, like he's not a bad guy. You know what I'm saying? He actually—he almost actually killed uh, Damon. Like if that fight went yeah, on yeah. a little bit longer, he probably you know kill, kills him. Yeah. And then you know, Renera sort of takes a liking to him because you you know we like Renera, and we like her decision making in the first you know in the first season. We're like, oh, he seems like a nice guy. You know, like this is a, <laughs> this is a good match. You know, and then oh no, you know. I just saw ghost. But Renera was sort of smart enough to see that 
nah, this ain't going to yeah, work yeah. type thing. Allison is not smart enough to see that. Nah, this is not this is not going to work type thing, you know? So it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. We then she tries so hard to be like her dad. It's like, you're not, you're not. Yeah. Um, probably my second favorite scene of this episode is uh, the conversation that you sort of just alluded to between Otto, Kristen, and, um, and Aegon. Aegon. When you like now that you brought it up, which is actually a good point, I have no idea why. Well, I guess yeah, I don't know why. I don't do. Do you have any idea why he went to have told Aegon his his plan? Because I think, I mean, I think part of it is like, well, Aegon's just happy because he he just is you know bloodthirsty, you know. But I don't. I'm also wondering if he had that ulterior motive of like, well, I'm going to go tell him to get in his good graces, you know, type, right. type thing. Yeah. That's um, the only thing that I can think of is that he's trying to misdirect any attention from him and, and, and anybody possibly finding out what he was doing and why the, it happened the way it happened and why he wasn't there to defend it. Maybe that's why, because it's like if he distracts Aegon enough with, oh, this is this great plan because we're going to get revenge... It takes it. Dis, it distracts from the fact that you didn't do what you were supposed to be doing. Because what were you actually doing? Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. Mm. We also um, get in this episode for I mean, not this episode in this particular scene. In my opinion, the first time Otto sees the mistake that he sort of made by yeah. putting Aegon on the throne. I think it's sort of a, an enlightening conversation. And sort of refreshing to sort of hear him talk about the fact that Viserys is dead. We're worse off. It was a mistake to to put you there. You're a kid that knows nothing. And then to top off everything, <laughs> the, the big doozy of this conversation. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna take. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make Sir Kristen Cole the the hand of the king. Your your services are wild. no longer needed. <laughs> like, wild. What? wild what is going like, on that's crazy like your whole you just set yourself up for death you're done you're all done danny i mean they saw my face i, just, <laughs> I couldn't i was like i can't believe this like you it's it's one thing to make a bad decision but to make that, that decision, decision. <laughs> i was i was appalled <laughs> The that was the dumbest. A mitigated golf, and he, <laughs> and he did it out of complete anger. Just, not just anger, but just just being a child. Yeah, just, just like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to show you what kind of person I, sir. You just why he's one of the best people you have on your side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is kind of Otto's fault. He took he took it a little too far. Yeah, he did. He know? did take it to a little bit too far in that conversation, especially when he when. When Aegon is like, well, Viserys made, made me king. king. And he's like, did he? You sure about that? You sure about that, kid? Hmm? Hmm? You well, I think at that point, <laughs> he wasn't talking to him as the hand anymore. At that point, he was talking as a, as a, as a grandfather. Yeah, as a grandfather. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I agree. I agree with you. There's also... A, Cole. I know. Like, who is this guy? And, and also, why is he there in this conversation? Like, yeah, why, like, why, why like get out, bro. Yeah, I mean, like, that's his personal body. I get it, but but, but damn. Like, you know, he's, he's, he knows everything. You know? He should have um, he, he, he been excused. But I mean, but yeah. Again, killing all the rat catchers. What a dumb decision. I mean, I can't even blame Otto. I They think, actually had me siding with Otto. Which I know, which is kind of crazy. Like, you, <laughs> it kind of almost is a triangle now. Because there's a rift between the greens when you have Allison and Otto on one side yeah. and you have um, Aegon and sort of Kristen Cole on one side, except Allison doesn't sort of know it yet that there's a rift yeah. because she's still, you know, doing the deeds with uh There's with Cole, a civil but, war within a civil war. Yeah. With these yeah. families. Yeah, exactly. Both sides of the family. Yeah. Which and is crazy. yeah, which is crazy because there's also it. Damon and uh, Renera that are also on two opposite ends right now too. Mm -hmm. So there's rifts. I guess it's you know like a like a square now, bunch of right angles. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a geometry lesson for today. Bunch uh, of right angles. Uh, I was yeah. actually surprised they caught the cheese guy so quickly. I, I know. I know. And they and they, you know I actually had to watch a video to see like how the hell did they catch this guy? Like and because it it also wasn't fully explained how cheese got away but I, it was explained 
that one of the maids that he ran into saw him and that's how they were able to catch blood but cheese i have no idea how the hell that guy got got away they don't really all, all the rat catchers like mm-hmm. yeah so <laughs> just slanted happened to have the right one and <laughs> you know poor doggy I know. I was gonna bring that up. That's actually in my notes for for later on. But yeah, the damn dog, man. He had a, he had that look on his face. Like, damn. I hope they don't catch me either. Like, stream me up and make me in like dog chow chow or something. <laughs> dog, puppy chow. Yeah, puppy chow or something. But um. Uh, so I guess the question is like, how do you think Cole? I can't even call him Sir anymore. How do you think Cole? He doesn't deserve to be called Sir anymore. How do you think Cole is going to handle being? The hand of the king, because I think this is going to be a, a, oh, a, terrible. Like a, a disaster. Like, disaster. A, a, like waiting to happen. Like, I I think this is a marriage made in hell. I mean, he already <laughs> ha- did one plan that sucked. <laughs> so he's not good at planning. And now he's and got that. power. And now he's, yeah, exactly. So, like, I, I can't even predict what he's going to do because I really don't know. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure it's going to be shit (laughs) honestly with the relationship that he has with allison though i wouldn't be surprised if allison is trying to hand to him (laughs) right trying to manipulate the situation or maybe he's giving my opportunity maybe she's giving him a hand sorry (sighs) but maybe (laughs) but maybe but maybe because then this is this is an opportunity for her to have the voice that Otto wouldn't allow wouldn't allow yeah or wouldn't support. Right. But we'll see. I don't know. No, Christy, I think you, he, yeah, yeah, I, I, that's very much a plausibility for sure. So, but it's, it's a possibility or it could be that he gets too high and mighty on himself and he's just like, you're just a hole that I enter now. <laughs> so. That's what she said? Gosh, <laughs> man. Why did you phrase it like that? Because I'm not going to be crass. Okay. I think we've, We've gone. We've gone to that point, Mix. You got, but you get the gist. You got what I was trying to say. <laughs> Just oh, <hold laughs> right, it's a portal. <laughs> I just want to say randomly, it's thundering and outside now, and I'm so I'm hearing these like crashes. I'm like, what is Darius doing upstairs? Um, I was not- I was literally about to say it is. <laughs> For, for completely forgetting we're in two different states. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I was yes, like, it's, it's, it's we weird. have a severe thunderstorm going yeah. on right now. So I'm hearing the thunder and I'm like, what is that sound? Anyway, continue. Okay. But no, I, I think this is going to be an, uh, a disastrous marriage. Like, I don't think there's yeah. there's nothing good that's going to come of it. As a matter of fact, I think this marriage is going to lead to Aegon's death. That That's what oh, I think is going to end it. It ultimately end up happening and it's your fault yeah know. exactly this is what happens when you put another kid on, on the kid, especially if he keeps getting in the pants of the lady like <laughs> this is there's too much distraction you're too distracted yes very yeah so um so from there and now gonna- I'm going to say one more thing. And now they have something to hide. I don't know about Allison at this point, but he has something to hide and I feel like he might be so desperate to do anything at this point to make sure that that information does not come to the surface. Yeah. Uh, we're then going to jump to um, Sir Eric. Eric. Sorry. Sir Eric. Uh, e or A? A. Okay. Still with A. <laughs> yeah. Air. Air. Rick. Uh, sneaking into Dragonstone to try and kill Renair, which is a really well done and put together sequence. In my opinion, because I think they did a good a good job um, with the tension and building it up, and I thought the the fight between the two brothers was really well done and well choreographed. The editing uh, before they get to that, yeah, yeah, was yeah, it was really well superb. done, superb. Like, yeah, you really couldn't tell. Like, exactly, I was extremely. Con- and then once they start fighting, I think you even get further confused yeah. at yes. who's at who's who. I was very. I, we were. I was just confused as the the actual characters i'm just like he's yeah. like who which one is the right one i'm like i don't know exactly um by the Kill end both of them ironically as you alluded to uh both of them end up <laughs> end up dying <laughs> spoiler alert uh, uh in in this sequence but i think it just goes to show you like their commitment to their duty and to their purpose far mm-hmm. not far outweighed but it just outweighed their blood for each other and Mm-hmm. As a result of that, they were willing to kill each other. But I also think by the end of it, Eric 
with an E. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I I do believe it was Eric at the end that was standing. Yeah, I agree. yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I think we're all in agreement with that. It was Eric yeah. that was standing. I felt like he probably couldn't live with himself after after that, and decided yeah. to off himself yeah. forever. Not <laughs> only that, my thought was like they didn't know which Eric was Eric either. Yeah. So my thought was. Uh, like, well, I have to kill myself because they're never gonna trust me. Exactly. They're never gonna know if I'm. That's very true. That's brother. a very good point. That's what right. I got from it, yeah. actually. So, and but it was just, still, yeah, it still was very sad to see him take his life like that. Yeah, it's um, a very interesting perspective. I didn't think of that. I just thought it. Uh, he killed his brother. No, and I, I, Yo, that's I, storm is crazy. Yeah, I thought that was the definite reason, to be honest <laughs> with you. Um, but no, that's a good point that you that you brought up because I wasn't thinking that. I was just thinking that, like, I I just thought that he had done what he yeah. Did I mean, and, and was, you're also correct mm-hmm. that like he wouldn't be able. He just killed his brother. Like, yeah. But what did what did he say at the end? Right before he was just like, did he say my queen? He said something. Which, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. But you can ha- like Eric could say that and be like. Uh, you know but why would he say that yeah, if I she's so. not the queen that's why i'm like oh that's true that is true yeah i guess you're right <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're no you're all right but i mean it depends on how honest that uh, eric with an a wants to be yeah so <laughs> um but we didn't even talk about the scene with Masseria. yeah we we're going to talk to because i mean because i feel like there's a lot of scenes in here that are, are like setting up other yeah. other things so i felt like this, these scenes were like the major like plot points of the episode and then like we'll sort of like address the the smaller yeah. scenes what's um, it malert what's Masseria? i oh, call right? it a white worm because that's what they yeah, like, refer, to, yeah, <laughs> refer to her in the episode but yeah um every uh the episode sort of wraps up from there we get Otto and allison talking mm-hmm. uh i was a little bit confused because i think i don't know where Otto is going because they've referenced High Garden and Old Town. I think he's going back to High Garden. I, I think he originally was going to Old Town to meet up yeah. with to meet up with their That's other child. Like, oh, the Tullys need you. you yeah, need to, yeah. They're, they're losing the banner ship there or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so he was he was originally going to go meet up with Allison's other son, who we have not met yet. Right. We've they've alluded to him several times. Yeah. But I think isn't his name Damon or her. It's very close. Yeah, it's, it's very close to Damon. I'm, I apologize. Don't kill me if, if I can't remember the kid's name. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> but they have another son. I think that's the most important thing. At least I got that right. Oh, so. by the way, we have struggled with this last week. Damon and Venera's son was stillborn. We forgot that, and that's yeah. why we was like, "Oh, do they have a son? I thought they did." No, they. He was stillborn. That was the one. Actually, a big, big plot point last season. <laughs> That, yeah, that was the one when I was still pregnant and sh- there was the scene where she... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and then I was just like, mm, this is probably not something I should watch right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, press on. I just wanted to... Um, so, that, so they wrap up that. Um, Alicent and, and in the next scene, uh, Alicent, uh, you know, tries to resist with all of her might against... Uh, the advances of Sir Kristen Cole, but can't she succumbs to his whim and <laughs> yeah, they, she put up such a fight. Exactly, she's <laughs> the slaps. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that just makes I, I, I exactly. I, I did. <laughs> to be fair, okay. I do think she was releasing real frustration, real anger. Yes. Um, yes. We are, but also, I think it's a double reasons. I think she was frustrated with the situation. I think she was angry because she still wanted him, and I think that upsets her too because she's angry because she feels guilty. She's angry because he showed up. She's angry because <laughs> why do I still want you? Right. All the things. All the things. So that's how that episode ends. However, there were there were some other scenes that we didn't really touch upon, but they were more like scenes that were, in my opinion, sort of used to set up things that are going to happen or foreshadow things that are going to happen in future um, episodes. Yeah. So, but one of the things that we that we still didn't kind of get an answer on is why Helena and I actually do have her name written down here in these questions. 
but I didn't have it up there. So I good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but why Helena like picked her son like over her over her daughter? Like it, it, they never sort of kind of explain that, or maybe we'll maybe we will, or maybe we won't actually get an answer to that question. But maybe in the moment, because she did look very spaced out, we all understand at least from this from the audience perspective that she has some kind of foresight. So maybe in in having something a vision that we haven't we're not privy to yet maybe she knew that that was something that had to happen in order to build towards something else yeah. i mean she's uh -huh. definitely a dreamer um but i think you said it well last week we don't she doesn't even know if her dreams are real if she's dreaming or she's in like in reality or whatever yeah, it's like she can't true. make use of her mm -hmm. dreams um so i don't know I, I think this this they confirmed for me that she's a green singer with the uh, the green petals falling mm -hmm. in that scene, which is yeah. great cinematography. Um, so for me, she's a green singer, but she's like, she's really you know she's spaced out. She doesn't know what to do. Um, you know what? you're gonna say something? Oh no, you're just showing. <laughs> 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 I promise we're almost done. Uh, we also got a scene of Hugh the Ironsmith, who. Um, mm -hmm. Is building the scorpions. Yeah. And if you remember in the past, in the well, the past episode, but the episode one, he was one of the um, well, he was the guy that came before yes. Aegon. It was like, yeah, we need to get paid up front. Yeah. And yes. So we also get a scene with with him oh, and um yeah, his okay. wife. And his wife and his daughter. And so <laughs> it's not a nothing scene. Like, I mean, it, it is in a context my, of, my biggest takeaway was like damn they going through inflation too like, <laughs> right really expensive bro. yeah exactly <laughs> you're absolutely right um but it's not a nothing scene but it, in a con because you know that those that he at least is going to play a role in the in the war that's to come right mm -hmm. uh he's going to pick a side um but you know the, in this particular scene they're just sort of setting up more to come for his first character. Mm -hmm. The same can be said with uh, Corliss. No. Well, the same can be said for what I believe are Corliss's sons. Master children. Yeah. <laughs> Corliss's bastard children uh, what, how else do you want to say that? yeah you're right you're right, you're right. there's no other. is youtube gonna censor me his uh his children out of wedlock yeah okay you can say it like yeah that. Right. I, don't, <laughs> I don't know why you're trying to skirt, but <laughs> skirt, but skirt. that's that's my theory mm -hmm. um the we had the white as we alluded to we had the white worm scene between uh, between Renera and her which i thought was really well done yeah and i and i've i've enjoyed her two scenes thus far that she's been in Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think her accent has gotten better from last season. Mm -hmm. And I do like the juxtaposition, uh, juxtaposition of those two, like characters and them sort of coming to realize that they actually have way more in common than they do, you know, you know. not, I guess. <laughs> and I do, I do believe that she's going to, I think her going back is going to lead her to sort of siding with the blacks and she sort of looks as Renera as like you gave me your freedom give me you gave me my freedom i respect you as a woman you are a queen i want to help you get this throne back i mean yeah. not only that but like if she didn't let white worm go like what she be that's also true it? yeah because if she was that's very true. crucial in that spotting of eric yeah that's true egg. um so I was just That's, like, oh, man. yeah. I mean, maybe even there's indebted to her. It's on a low. She's not going to admit to that, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, it's interesting because they didn't show how that played out. They just no, they did him coming back. Yeah, know, exactly. Him. All right. Um, so, and then we already talked about the dog, <laughs> uh, which is my last thing. Um, was there any other scenes or anything else that we missed? I mean, really I think doing? we touched on everything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, in this episode, but. Tamika, anything else that did we miss? Did we miss anything? Or? I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. I am the cutaway scenes. I'm curious to see how they'll play because they do seem small in comparison to what the central theme is of the episode. Mm -hmm. But obviously they're building towards something else. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, overall feelings, um, overall feelings for the first two episodes and, you know, this episode, I guess. I mean, we're in a great spot. I'm like really I enjoying so. it. Um, 
this episode was dialogue heavy. Um, but, but they write dialogue but so they, well. That's what I was going like, to say. It like, doesn't... They write very well. Like a lot of the scenes reminded me of old Game of Thrones, old Game of Thrones like yeah. between Varys and Littlefinger and mm -hmm. the plotting and the, and the scheming. Very... With less sex in the background. That well, is that's another thing I will say. They really do not rely on that sex position. They no. really focus on And that on was one of the you. things that they that they focused on. Mm -hmm. They wanted to tone down the sex in this, yes. in this in the show. Now, they still have it, Obviously. but it's yeah. not nearly as egregious as, right. say, for example, that Littlefinger scene yes and, uh, i still don't know what happened in that scene I'm i know like, what I... happens in that scene and they and like in my opinion <laughs> they did a good enough job like explaining it they did not need to show all of that which they you know that they did yeah. but i i knew what they were trying to accomplish in that scene can it, i but, feel like there should be two options to watch the episode <laughs> just give to silence the background noise so i can just focus on what he's saying everything else is extremely distracting yeah, yeah but so one time was enough for me. <laughs> right. Yeah, they don't they don't rely on the sex position. They really truly try to show you what's happening and allude to things and really make great use of foreshadowing. Um, so I commend them. I'm I'm really enjoying the season so far. Mm -hmm. would, would you still watch the show with your parents? This show, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, okay. mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. <laughs> That's not terrible. Game I mean, of Thrones, it was like yeah. I was just say Game of Thrones is like I I don't know about it's it. Cringe, yeah, exactly. Um, Tamika, how are you feeling so far about the first two episodes? I'm, I, I'm in a good place. It was funny because after we finished the second episode, I think because what Danny said is it was dialogue heavy, but Darius was just like, oh, this song, this this season's really slow. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> what happened so? last season? Like, that's what I said. Yeah, I said it's, pretty, this, it it's slow, no like, different. Yeah, that's what yeah. I said. And I'm just like. The Game yeah. of Thrones, that Game of Thrones, if you go back and watch, is an extremely slow Yes, very. The season, like, is, at, the season one is extremely slow and very methodical. But that's what we love about it is the fact that it doesn't rely to, now the later seasons relies heavily like, on CGI and blood and violence. <sighs> and we're not going to talk about it too much. But, <laughs> Thank you. but I just, I, I, it, the, this show sort of goes back to the to the roots of Game of Thrones, where it's just people in a room talking, and the fact that the dialogue is so well written that you're so you're still invested. Yeah, and this methodical pacing is a crescendo. Yeah, exactly. We are. Yeah, and I'm and I'm much more. Darius is very more of an action person. He, mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm much more of a critical critical thinker. Right. So it's like not that he doesn't think critically, but that's <laughs> I didn't. I, you know, I was thinking he's just a little. You know, it's a little shy. But yeah. <laughs> it's not a shot at all like like to throw this a, as an example like i can't i can't expect him to sit down and watch something like the tragedy of Macbeth with denzel washington with me because mm. like 10 minutes in he's sleeping mm. but with me i'm like oh, that sounds this. like a liner <laughs> where women are just <laughs> we think you know no no i'm saying Alana oh, sounds like they're, <laughs> they're trying to, uh, I love how you tried to spin that. Like, you no, tried it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, Alana, like, yeah, no, if something doesn't ca catch her attention within like the first five to 10 minutes, she's like out. She doesn't, yeah, yeah she's out. She, she can't watch it. Have you watched Tragedy of Macbeth? I want to so bad. And you, I don't have Apple Plus. So it's I like, get yeah. the free trial. I literally got the free trial. Oh, just trial. to watch the trial. Just of to, but the I thing got, is, like, it's only on. It's, only, it's yeah, it's only on Apple Plus, yeah. But no, I um, I love the story because I I mean I remember reading it in high school, so yeah. um, you know I love the story and I'm and I you know it got a lot of accolades and a lot of attention when when it came out. So yeah, I mean it's definitely on my list of um, even though it came out like three years ago. Yeah, it <laughs> to, came out a while to, ago, but it's uh, real and it's it. long. Yeah. When I first started it, I was just like, why is it so long? I'm not gonna last. It went by so fast because it's just just goes and go, like yeah. I was just I was so enthralled was just, yeah oh my gosh and the imagery like the it's just it's amazing watch it anyway back in House of the Dragon but yeah no I'm I'm I'm, I'm feeling good about where we are right now I mean I can't I would have to go back and watch the first two episodes of season of season one but I feel like the show there's no drop off or fall off between season one and season two I feel like the production yeah. is there the writing is still good mm -hmm. even though they switch showrunners like you can't tell um, it's it's all still really well done, and the story is being told. And as you as you, and as you mentioned, each 
each episode has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. And which I appreciate. Um and uh and so I'm just I'm just I'm just enjoying it. Um but yeah. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Uh, we'll catch you guys back to review episode three and see where we are. I can't believe we're shockingly <laughs> like we're only have six episodes left. Like it's kind of crazy. Like when you really think there's but, not but that many you think about left. it, it's like six weeks. Yeah. That go by extremely fast. Like <laughs> That's nothing. That's like a blink of an eye. I don't I know. I know. I don't want to think about it, but still. But uh, yeah. Thank you. Well, you um, like six weeks of listening to these motherfuckers over here. You know what? <laughs> I think people be surprised, man. I think people enjoy us. Well, I'm probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No, I mean, I think people. I think people will appreciate the fact that they have, you know, their peers. You know, reviewing. Yeah, yeah. yeah reviewing sure. stuff. So, guys, just keep uh, continuing to support, continue to watch, continue to check us out because, you know, we want to continue to grow the podcast and want to continue to do this and because we love it. And uh, we will see you next week. We're keeping the trend going. Yeah. Three weeks of trend. <laughs> Peace. Okay. Okay.